A very warm welcome to everyone. We thank God for this series, Finding God. I said it before, I say it again. We find God because he first found us. We are created in his own image. And so this moment, let us think about the man called Isaac. Isaac, a biblical figure that we read about in the Bible. Isaac, the son of Abraham. Isaac, the son of the promise. Isaac, one of the patriarchs of Israel. And when I mention patriarch, I mean one of the forefathers. You know, it all begins with the man, Abraham. God finds Abraham and calls him his friend. And indeed, he became Abraham's friend and Abraham became his friend. And so the story begins in Genesis chapter 12 where Abraham becomes a man chosen of God and through him all the other nations of the earth uh, received their blessing. So Isaac is the son of Abraham, as I have already said, and he is conceived after the angels made a promise, a promise that came in Genesis chapter 18. This men, three men on their way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their iniquity. But they passed by Abraham's house. And in Genesis chapter 18, they make a promise to Abraham and they told him, we shall come back here by this time next year. Your wife, Sarah, shall have conceived, shall have produced for you a child, and this child, his name was given by the mother Isaac. And Isaac, the name comes from the Hebrew word. Remember when this promise was made in Genesis chapter 18, Sarah was beyond producing age. Abraham was also beyond the age. And so they were both old people. And because it seemed impossible, because it seemed hard, Sarah made a laughter in her heart. She laughed. And so the Bible does mention in Genesis chapter 18 that she made a laughter. And because she laughed, this is where the name Isaac comes from. That then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah, the Bible says, was listening at the entrance of the tent and which was behind Abraham. And Abraham and Sarah were already very old. And this is what laughter comes from. This is where laughter comes from. So Sarah laughed to herself as he thought. After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? So Sarah makes a laughter in her heart. You know, it was kind of mockery laughter because it seemed impossible to have a baby after menopause. But listen to me. The angels made a pronouncement and said, is there anything too hard for God? And so Isaac was conceived and it came to pass that the son Isaac was conceived, that it came to pass that the son Isaac was produced and it was all joy in Abraham's life. And so in Genesis chapter 21, verse 6 and 8, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that so Sarah said, this is after producing a baby, God has brought me laughter. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And this is where the name Isaac comes from, laughter. In the first sense, laughter means that mockery, that actually they were not believing what the angel was saying. But after the baby had been born, Sarah made a pronouncement that said, people will laugh with me. Happiness, 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 because joy came at a time. They were not expecting it. So this man, Isaac, is joy to the family, is joy to Sarah, is joy to Abraham. And so this is 
why I got interested in the personality of the younger man. That the children that were produced later on, or even the children that were produced before. Remember, Isaac is a half-brother to another person called Ishmael. And I didn't want to go into the story of Ishmael, uh, how he came about with his mother, uh, Hagar, the slave girl. And that story is all contained in this word of God. Now, but our passage, our personality that we are thinking about is the man that brought laughter, that brought happiness to the family. Remember, Ishmael had already been born, but it was not joy, it was not happiness, it was not laughter in the house of, of Abraham. But Isaac, the son of the promise, brought laughter, brought joy in the family. And so, this young man, what I got interested in was also he lived a life similar to his father. His father was a sojourner. His father was um, a, someone who was always on the move with the tents and building altars to God. So Isaac was that person. So you read about his story in Genesis chapter 18, how he came about. And in Genesis chapter 21, this is why you find him coming up and his birth was pronounced then. And it was then that actually we hear that Isaac was the inheritor of his father's property, was the inheritor of the, of, 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 of the gifts that he had received from everywhere. As a sojourner, he was, you know, a prosperous man. He was so rich. He had cows, he had goats, he had sheep, and so many things. So this young man comes onto the scene and brings joy to the family. And so, friend, there are gifts that we receive. But some of them do not give us the joy that, that we deserve. Now, this boy brought joy into the house of Abraham. Now, I just want to ask everyone, if you're a son in someone's house, you're a daughter in someone's house, do you bring them happiness? Do you bring them joy? Do you bring them laughter? Isaac did the same in Abraham's house. And so why he is a person of interest at this time is also he belongs to the hall of fame the hall of the hall of faith as we read about in the genesis in the hebrews chapter 11 and he becomes one of those that the bible enumerates actually by faith he is listed and so he becomes one of those patriarchs of the israelites and so what i pick from this is a few things that I'm going to highlight, but one thing that I want to ask you, do you bring joy to your parents? Do you bring happiness to them? Are they still living? Or you are a parent, do your children, do you bring them up? Do you have something that actually that you have done that actually makes them make you happy, make you joyful, make, bring change situations in a house? And so it's a question that I've been asking myself as a child in some my father's house. And if you're a child, ask yourself in your father's house. And if you're a parent, also ask yourself whether your children bring you the joy that Isaac did bring to his parents, Sarah and Abraham. Now listen to me about four things, very, very quickly that I'm going to bring about. That as he grew up, Isaac, a son in the home, he was obedient. Now, what testimony I see in Genesis chapter 12 is what I give you this time. In Genesis chapter 12, God did tempt Abraham and he wanted him to sacrifice Isaac to him. Now, what, what fascinates me is when Abraham tells Isaac, carry this firewood, Isaac puts firewood on his head. You know, the knife, you know, the fire, and they head to the hill where God had instructed Abraham to go. And Isaac never questioned his father where they were going. Isaac never asked so many questions, but the only question that he asked was, Daddy, we are going to the hill and for the sacrifice, but where is the lamb? It was just that simple question, but he didn't ask. He didn't, he was not stiff-necked like we see very many children do. And so this is a very important lesson that this young man in Genesis chapter 12, chapter 22, 
He never questioned his father's authority. He never said anything, but he laid himself up. Now, lady, gentlemen, obedience is key. And God desires obedience in our life. God desires obedience in your life. And so Isaac was a son of obedience. He did everything and we copy something. And so why I'm sharing this is as it fascinates us, as we look at it as a big lesson, we also need to be obedient to our Father who is in heaven. First of all, that whatever he tells us, we do. And now to the children, because we're also people's children, obedience in the things that glorify God. The instruction came from God, and therefore Isaac followed his father's instruction. And so I want to ask you that in your life, follow obedience, something that pleases God, and then what your parents teach you. I mean, we are all parents, yes, and therefore we can also put this to our children if we're teaching them godly things to follow the instructions that we give them. Now, point number two is that Isaac, what fascinates me is his patient nature in his situations. And one of the situations that um, fascinates me in the patience in the situations is when time came for him to marry, he followed the instructions. Whatever his father had planned for him, he was patient in those situations. Unlike his Esau, his grandson that came later, but Isaac was patient in situations, as we read in Genesis chapter 24, verses 62 to 67, the way things flowed, the way things moved, the way he married Rebecca, he was patient for every step. I want to ask us to be patient in situations, follow the instructions that God has given and remain patient. And Rebecca came into the life of Isaac and they became husband and wife and everything was lined up according to uh, the instructions that had been given. So be patient in the situations. Do you have something that you want, do, you want to do? Be patient. And patience is one of the virtues of the Holy Spirit. One of the fruits that is listed is patience. So I ask you to be patient when something is not coming the way at the speed that you want it to happen. Isaac gives us a lesson. Patience at all times, and then God's timing is the best. It's something that I wanted to put to you. Point number three, that Isaac exhibited his faith in God all the time, and Genesis chapter 26 is our story. He kept following the instructions. He kept, you know, exhibiting his faith in God. No wonder he is listed among those that are on the hall of fame, the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And so many events up, up, um, unfolded, but he was always exhibiting his total faith in God. And this is where you find him all the time, whenever he would go, a traveler all the time, a sojourner all the time, but wherever he would go, he would pitch tent and in the tent, wherever he was, he would have an altar for God. Now, this altar was for prayer. The altar was for worship. And so, in Genesis, in verse 25 of chapter 26, we read about him, that he pitched tent, and he pitched, he made an altar for God, a person that kept exhibiting his faith in God. And this, in this generation, ladies and gentlemen, in this generation, brothers and sisters, we need to, to follow the instructions to exhibit our faith in God. Because, and this is when we shall acquire everything that we need. And then one other thing that I want to find out, finalize with is Isaac was a peacemaker. I have been reading Genesis chapter 26, and you need to read it. He would move from place to place, digging wells, opening up the wells that his father Abraham had you know, had made already. But there are people that kept, you know, kept disturbing him. And these people were the Philistines, his enemies. But what we read about in Genesis chapter 26 is actually every time he would move away, that he would be provoked, but he moves away for purposes of peace. Now, there are some people who like to follow arguments, people who want to quarrel all the time, people who want to shout at others all the time, 
Isaac at all times was a peacemaker. And in Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 to 22, the, Philipp the Philistines kept provoking Isaac. But Isaac would be all the time, you know, making peace with everyone that he was. And so he kept that at heart. And in this chapter 26, it is because he was a peacemaker that you find him being called the blessed of God. And I desire that you also be called the blessed of God, the blessed person by God and people seeing some fruit in you. And so in this verse 26, the Bible says that the Philistines followed him as I finish this episode that we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. Do people see God in you? Do people see attributes of God in you? And so people said that they saw God in Isaac. So they said that there ought to be a sword, sworn agreement between us. So they sought for an agreement between them and Isaac because I was a peacemaker. And in verse 29, that you will do us no harm, just as we did not harm you, but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. Now this is, and now you are blessed by the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the peacemaker Isaac was pronounced blessed by God. And so during our times, during this situation that we are in, we need to exhibit God's attributes in us so that other people can say, blessed by God. And it is my heart's desire for you. It's my heart's desire for myself that as I walk around, as I do my work in ministry, in your workplace, in your house, at your home, at your workplace, wherever, do people pronounce that this man is blessed by God? that this woman is blessed by God, that this young man is blessed by God. So Isaac's story, he's a peacemaker, a patient person, a worshiper of God. This generation needs men and women who have the attributes of Isaac. His enemies were all over the place, but he remained composed and found ways of you know, of solving those uh, problems, those challenges that you and I are facing all the time. Now, my brother, my sister, the person that we're talking about is Isaac, the man in the hall of fame, in the hall of faith, and always peacemaking. Husband, be a peacemaker. Wife, be a peacemaker. Young man, be a peacemaker. And young woman, be a peacemaker. Everyone of us to be peacemakers. Uganda will be a peaceful country. And so I want to thank God for the picture that Isaac paints for us. And I leave it with you. Be a peacemaker. Be a worshiper of God in this situation that proves hard, proves actually divergent remain focused. Isaac remained focused until he married and he had a family and we shall follow on looking at another personality. But may God bless you. Be an Isaac in your family. Bring laughter. Bring joy. Be an Isaac in your, at your workplace. Be an Isaac in your church. Be an Isaac in the fellowship. Bring laughter, bring joy in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the people continue worshiping God, who is our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and watch over you. Bring joy, bring peace in the situation that you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. <music>